you. Well, let's stay on the climate conversation this afternoon. Zali Stegall is the independent MP for Warringah and today reintroduced a private member's bill to parliament in an effort to legislate an emissions reduction target. Welcome. Hi, Patricia. So the coalition is still locked in negotiations, but Scott Morrison has reportedly told the Liberal Party room he intends to take a binding commitment to net zero by 2050 to Glasgow. Is that a win for Australia? Well, it's a baby step, but it's really not enough. We need that 2030 commitment to be strong and meaningful. And that means it needs to be between 50 and 60 per cent emission reduction if we really are fair dinkum about reducing our emissions. So the Prime Minister needs to do that. And he is in a tough spot. It's like the child who's left preparing for the exam to the night before the exam. We've had six years since we signed up to the Paris Agreement. And yet here we are two weeks out, no plan, no strategy. But at least, hey, others have done the work and we've put it on the table. I would strongly recommend and suggest that we need to open this up. This needs to be a bipartisan policy. Labor supports debate on the climate change bills. It's time the Prime Minister and the Coalition support debate. Let's have an open conscience vote. Let's really move this policy area forward so it's not just held to ransom by a small group of nationals. The Deputy Prime Minister and Nationals leader Barnaby Joyce says uh, this is a titanic change to Australia's trajectory. He argues they need to do due diligence. Isn't that fair that they need to kind of, you know, analyse this plan that's been put forward by the Liberal Party? Absolutely not. We're talking about an agreement that Australia signed up to under a coalition government, I should say, in 2015, six years ago. And so now, two weeks before, they're saying, oh, but hang on, don't rush me. I need a little bit of time to do my due diligence. What have you been doing? Well, we know what they've been doing. They've been denying that they need to do anything about it. They've been denying that there is a problem, that there is a transition underway. We are on the eve of the biggest disruption coming across three of the major areas of our economy, from energy, from transport and from food. And that disruption is coming. And if we don't have a plan in place, we are absolutely going to be on the back foot and miss out. There is some $65 billion worth of investment up for grabs by 2025 if we have the right policies in place. I mean, that will take care of regional Australia. We know from a report for households can save up to $5,000 by 2030 if we electrify everything rapidly. So why aren't we doing that? Why isn't Barnaby Joyce calling for that, a saving of $5,000 per year for households? Now, that is something that would be good. Your bill is pushing for a 60% reduction in emissions by 2030. The Energy Minister, Angus Taylor, has ruled out adopting more ambitious medium-term climate uh, targets. Um, that's, what do you make of that development? Because we keep talking about 2050, but obviously there was an, you know, an expectation that Australia would come in with more ambitious targets for 2030. That looks to be off the table. What are the implications of that? Well, the implications are huge for Australia. It means we will miss out on a huge amount of uh, investment internationally, but it also means that we're falling further behind and we are going to be paying the cost because our contribution is significant. I think what it says is that Minister Taylor really is a climate denier and he ultimately is not prepared to, to take the action that's necessary, which is in the next decade. The, the developed world has already used up 85 per cent of Global, global carbon budgets. So that means in the next 10 years we need to substantially reduce because carbon budgets are compounding. They are increasing substantially. So it has to happen in this next 10 years time. And look, I think uh, Minister Taylor simply hasn't got the commitment and I don't think he really has the dedication to genuinely wanting to reduce emissions. In the last month the government has approved four more coal mines. That really says it all mm. when at the same time the International Energy Agency is saying there can be no more new coal or gas. So Zali Stegall, if the Prime Minister somehow pulls off uh, net zero emissions by 2050 and a solidarity position for Australia to go to Glasgow, keeps 2030 as it is, does that neutralise the issue? Does that put an end to the sort of debate or do you think there's still going to be live red-hot anger in the community? 
Absolutely. This is like, it's like saying I've, I've secured the vaccines, but then we don't see them for months and we're still in lockdown. I mean, at the end of the day, we need actual accountability. We need an audit. And that's why you have to legislate your commitment. So legislating net zero by 2050 with the climate change bills and having a clear framework on how it will be delivered, not just on the wing and a prayer, not just, you know, let me spin these numbers and make them look good when the time is right or on the eve of a big announcement. It actually has to be a genuine year on, year on, year off. There is a lot of work that needs to be done. We need to audit all the sectors. We need to make sure everyone is bringing down their emissions and that we're embracing all the technologies. And that requires, with due respect, it requires uh, the input of a strong climate change commission with expert independent advice. Just like we've followed health advice, we need to follow expert advice on climate change policy. And the government simply is not willing to do that because I suspect they know the experts will tell them you are not focusing on the right technologies and you are not doing the right thing. Zali Stegel, many thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Independent MP for Warringah, Zali Stegel, who you might recall actually ran on this platform around climate change when she defeated uh, Tony Abbott, the former Prime Minister, on that issue. You can keep up to date at news.abc.net.au and on ABC iView.